Hi everyone, Curtis is here from Goth Rider Creations and in today's episode I'm going to finish off doing the last of the routing on the silent zombie. Stay tuned! So, if you watched my last episode with the guitar show you will have seen I've done a little bit of tidying. So, uh, yes, I know where most of my stuff is now. I've got new shelves, everything is tidy. I got rid of a giant pile of sawdust. So I think we're ready to go. So, last episode, we got the electronics cavity sorted out for the uh, silent pickup. So that's all done. All I've got to do now is sort out the second electronics cavity for the pickup, normal pickup cavity. So, first of all, I need to work out where it's going. Now, that probably sounds a bit obvious, but I'm not 100% sure how I want to lay this out. I mean, I've got my tone, I've got my volume, and I've got a big old gap here so I can throw in the switch that came with the donut. So I have drilled holes all the way through so I know where my pots are going. Now from what I've seen BC Rich don't seem to worry too much about the cavities. More often than not they're just a straight line almost like the pit guards you get on the front of tellies. Uh, it's basically that bottom back so I think I'm going to do almost what they do is that I'm going to work out where the pots are going, work out where the switch is going and then just make a cover that matches that and then just try and draw a semi-pleasing shape. If it is literally just a single strip with rounded ends we can do that. Um, it will depend more on the switch and where the screw holes are going. Um, I am going to screw down this cover, I'm not going to bother with magnets or anything like that. Um, the silent pickup is screwed in anyway, there's exposed screws. There's, there's no point making extra work for myself when it's already as is. So, uh, first of all, I'm going to draw out where the cavity is going to be. Right, sorry about that. Um, I was concerned because of the beveling that I want to do. Um, I know a few people were saying about me messing up the jigsaw carve a couple of episodes ago and just saying that you just incorporate that into the belly carve and there's no major issue. Now, I do want to take quite a bit of weight out of this. Um, it is for Mrs. Goth Rider and I would like as light a weight a guitar as I can without going hollow body because obviously meant to be a silent guitar, make it hollow body, it becomes acoustic so it, it needs to stay solid but I want to try and remove as much weight as I can and that means my thought was to do some pretty steep calves, maybe come in almost an inch in a way all the way round and then just really bevel in the calves from the front to the back and then that way I can remove that mass that way. Now because of the positioning of this I'm never going to be able to get that perfect anyway so it's not a crazy, it's not an essential option but as much bevel as I can get away with I would like to. So obviously with the belly carve I'm going to go quite deep and then maybe, I mean at the end of the day, the electronics are the most important thing. Um, the calves on the back after that, it doesn't matter that much. Um, 
I never quite understood why people were so obsessed with making sure that the back of the guitar looks better than the front. The bit you don't see people when you hang it on a wall, when you're playing it. I never understood it myself, you know, it's courses for courses, but for me, if you're gonna make any compromises, make them on the back. But anyway, so what I've done is I have, in fact, I'll show you on new side cam. Uh, I've just drawn a couple of circles from the force and a bit around there, joined it together, double check the switch is in good position, sorted. So the switch will fit in the depth um, as long as I get the route shallow enough. Um, and then all I'm thinking literally because this switch is so thin in here there is guys it's almost close to a centimeter either side because yeah this is 33 millimeters so yeah you've actually got about a centimeter either side so what I can do is literally mark out four posts in fact I grab a large drill bit if I literally just mark out a couple of positions near the corners here and these can become the screw posts we can literally call that the cavity and then we've got our screw positions all there that lot will all get routed out and because it's a set distance between the drill holes and I'm using the same templated parts to do the circles I can then make an exact replica of that in a piece of timber for the cover so theoretically that should do um, and then yeah it will just be a case of just getting the routing down deep enough dropping in the pots dropping in the switch soldering fingers you know it should work I mean it, it shouldn't be a major issue um, so yeah what I will do is before I cut anything out I am going to replicate this on another piece of timber so then I can make the cover and then yeah just get routing I suppose and then we have a piece of six mil ply. Um, if this was going to be stained or varnished or whatever, then I would worry about making sure that it was the same wood, thicknessing down, whatever else. Uh, I do still have plenty of this, so that is possible, but I'm painting it, so it really doesn't matter what the cover's made of. Um, and the way I see it, the thinner, the better, less aggro. So that's what we're working with so all i've got to do is replicate this onto this cut this out and then i will use this as the master to redraw this so it's definitely right so let's do that now Yes, I'm learning to do test cuts now. <sighs> 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 
now I know why Ben raves on about having things on the walls. <laughs> it is actually quite handy. So, got the rough shape done. I'm going to grab my files now, clean this up, and then we should be golden. <laughs> Right, so that's the basic shape all cut out and ready to go. Uh, unfortunately, the inevitable splintering, it's plywood, what are you gonna do? Um, so I will need to sand it, probably clear out and then uh, fill it or something. It, it was inevitable. So that's all sorted. All I'm gonna do now is Grab a sheet of sandpaper and stick it to me cutting mat and then I can get this final sanded. Um, I know a lot of people say in the UK you can't get decent double sided tape and the super glue and masking tape trick is the only way to go. It is a very good way to go but if you don't have any super glue to hand or it's a pain in the butt or if you've only got blue masking tape which is not very good for this flooring tape, otherwise known as carpet tape. Um, I get this, I used to get this by the roll because I used to have to fit carpets, but um, yeah, this stuff, it's not that expensive. It's about nine, maybe 10 pounds a roll, which might sound a lot compared to some masking tape, but this roll I have used for the last five years, and I think I've taken about a meter out of it. So this will last you a decade maybe <laughs> um, so yeah it is really good for this kind of thing it's you do get a little bit of residue and people say that's always the reason not to use it but it works and it's not a major issue so um, yeah if you need to stick something down like this I would recommend it it's definitely an option so let me stick this down and then I'll get this final sanded and then we can work out the drill holes And so there we have it. So marked out where the posts are going to be so I can drill into that on the body. We've got everything marked out as it needs to be. It's all sanded, it's all clean. So this is the way forward. Now I don't know why more people don't do this. Um, I'm assuming it's because you've already got the template so you just route and you don't need to think about it. Maybe. But I've seen people, um, I think it was uh, Ben Crow who did a custom guitar build um, in his home workshop and he routed out a custom cavity and then spent about a day and a half perfectly sanding out and cutting out a cover to fit. Now to my mind, why not work out what you want, make your cover, put the cover on the body, draw around it, obviously, you know, thin pencils and whatever, so you don't get too much of a gap, draw around it, there you go. Um, the cover then fits the hole. Um, tell me if I'm wrong, maybe I'm just being way too simplistic, but that just makes sense to me. But there you go. 
So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean off the existing lines so I don't confuse myself too much. Um, and then I'm going to trace around the outside, drill the four holes just in a little bit so I've got a guide so then I know where the post is going to be, then I can re-drill those and then we're in business. Right, that's now marked up, and if you can see, you can, yeah, <laughs> that's how far out the screw holes are, so that's probably why people do it the other way around. So, thankfully, I've not routed anything yet, so I can just redraw these posts, so that's all ready to go. So, I will get that redrawn, and then I guess it's time for routing. Um, I'm going to do this very, I'm not going to be as gung-ho as I have been with the other routes on these ones because the other ones I know that were, they're kind of covered up by, you know, pickup rings and whatever else. I'm painting so I know I can get away with a little bit of, you know, either epoxy or filling if needs be. So that's not a major one. This I actually want to get right. So um, I'm going to do the shoulder route first so route out the whole thing to six mil um or then oh, i'm gonna lose the posts but i have drilled them down far enough so if i draw them a little bit more then i can redrill the posts so that's not a major one i can basically freehand those so yeah i will take this down to the six mil depth make sure that the cover fits perfectly once that's done, then I can use the force in a bit, drop down the three main sections, get that down nearly to depth, and then I will literally just go bit by bit, tiny bit by tiny bit by tiny bit, and just work my way all the way down. So, yeah. And, oh, because people were suggesting that uh, I might want to try and use them, I did actually get, in fact, Mrs. Gothrider bought for me, thank you very much a whole pile of router bits so i've got loads and loads of different options from flattening bits to edge cutting bits but most importantly i now have ooh, some bearing bits so that is going to really change things up so i will use the force a bit to get down I will do an initial edge doing my freehanding and then I will, for the actual going down full depth, I'm going to use a bearing bit um, purely because I don't want to be taking my focus off the most important thing which is not going down too far. Um, now I am hampered because I am using the electronics from the donor guitar and they're not CTS pots, they're not long reach pots or anything like that, they are the short reach ones that go in a 3mm thick uh, pick guard so I'm going to have to be very careful about getting the depth right without screwing it up so <laughs> I'm probably going to use this to make sure I'm alright and then just take really shallow even if it's one mil at a time passes, so be it. If it takes me an hour, it takes me an hour. I want to make sure I get an exact depth so then there's no issues later on. go one cover done now it is tight I've only got a little bit of gap in the center sections I'm gonna have to widen out the outside edges but I'd rather do that slowly than take too much so I've got about a mil gap well about half a mil gap either side of the flats 
I'm going to try and get a consistent gap all the way round, but that's at a later date. I'm not concerned with that in the slightest. So all we've got to do, and this is why I put the holes in first, is that I can just thread a couple of screws in there and pop the cover off and not have to worry about digging it out. So that's that, and that's all done. So what I've got to do now is just hand draw in the points for the screws and then we can get the force in a bit and start going down to depth. Right, and that'll do it. So, we have the cover oh, there, and we're all ratted out. Now, we've still got about eight mil thickness left on the top. Um, I don't wanna go too much further until I know for sure exactly where the electronics are going and how. Um, but yeah, that, that will easily house the switch uh, once I've cut the slot for it. Um, and it will house the pots. So what I'm probably going to do is literally, once I'm more further on, I will just use a force and a bit and then just hand drill down millimetre by millimetre just for the pots because that's the only thing that needs it. Um, if it turns out that there's not enough throw on the switch, because I mean, you've got, even with the knob on there, you've got a good 10 mil on there. So theoretically that could go through and then I'm only using three positions on the switch rather than the five. So I've got neck pickup, both pickups, bridge pickups. So I'm not overly concerned um, about having full five position I'm not going to do any crazy electrics on this one at a later date maybe but for this one it's just going to be straight humbuckers so it only needs a very slight throw for those three positions so I'm hoping I can kind of leave that deep enough um, and then just yeah for each individual component I will just sink each one down as needed uh, no point in getting dangerous going too thin so that's basically it. Um, obviously, I need to sand and fill this. I need to tidy up the edges on that, but I've got to tidy up the edges on all my routes anyway, so that's kind of a finishing item. So, silent pickups, main body pickup. So, all that's left to do is to drill some holes for the various electronics so cables can get to where they need to get to and other than the final perimeter cut that's the major construction on this body done so let me go liberate my drill bits from the house and then we'll drill a lot of holes and we'll be done Right, so what we have are the extra long drill bits. Now, I've been looking around because oh, I've seen quite a few proper luthiers, um, Ben Crow included, who have these black drill bits and they're kind of slightly flexible and they've only got the actual helical drill section on like the bottom quarter of the drill bits. And I'd never seen those before and I had a look and obviously Stu Mac comes up and tries to sell you a set for 300 quid. 
So I hunted and hunted and hunted online and I couldn't find anything. The only long drill bits that I could see here in the UK anyway are the SDS construction drill bits that you through walls to you know put cables through brick or something like that and I couldn't find it and then I found the ones the Schumach sell and apparently they're called aircraft drill bits or aircraft engineering drill bits but, um, basically obviously for some kind of specialist use for building airplanes I don't know I'm no engineer um, but they are like 40 pounds per drill bit and I'm not paying that so had a look on uh, the Bezos funding site and uh, found this set of wood drill bits at uh, where are we 300 millimeters I think it was eight or nine pounds so that'll do so all we're gonna do is use the four millimeter one now the only difference is is that I can't bend it and kind of hold it like everyone else does because I end up just cutting my fingers to pieces so I've got to be a bit more careful with how I run the holes but this in theory should work and we're about to find out. So that, I think, is it. Um, I've still got to do the holes for the piezo pickup and for the bridge ground anyway, but I'm still deciding what I'm going to do with that. Technically, the piezo pickup is not designed for an electric guitar bridge, so I'm going to have to do something custom and... I like to say custom and fancy, some people might say bodgy, mm, we'll see where we go. But that I can do once I've got all of this laid out, so I'm not concerned with that because that's going to be next week's job anyway. And that's all sorted and just because I can, that is... Thank you, B-roll. Um, so yeah, that is it. Uh, we have a guitar. Um, I will sort out the drill holes for the um, neck. Um, I am gonna keep it bolt on. There's there's no point trying to do a set neck with this. It's just, it is what it is. Um, so all it will be is making up some transfer punches, which I'll show you next time. Uh, working out where the holes are, drill through, that's it. It's really gonna be nice and simple. Um, I might still have to shave the bottom of the uh, eel anyway, once we've got the bridge on and we know heights and everything, but that's not essential for now. Um, so yes, there we have it. Silent Zombie is coming along. So uh, yeah, I am quite happy with that. Um, yeah <laughs> so i think that'll do it for this one uh next episode as i say um i'll get the neck bolted on um we might see if we can do the bridge early that might make a life a little bit easier because once i've got that situated exactly right then i can drill the last couple of holes i can sort out the mounting for the silent piezo pickup and yeah, that's all the major work done. So everything else is just carving and painting and yeah. So I think we'll call that there for this one. Uh, thank you so much for uh, listening to me ramble. Um, please uh, like, subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, throw us a comment, let us know what you think. And uh, I shall see you all in the next one. Take care.